and hello everyone welcome back to another tutorial in this tutorial we'll be getting our hands dirty with roblox studio so let's get started with the basics firstly to move the camera around you can use w to move forward s to move backwards so w and s to move forward and backwards a and b to move sideways so almost like playing a game w a s and d will move your camera around you can use Q to move down and E to move up. So you can almost just use your keyboard to move you up and down, forward, back, left and right. You can use Shift and any of the movement keys to change your camera speed. So Shift and W will be slow while not holding it will be fast. So I'm not holding W, I'm not holding Shift while pressing W and S. Now I am. So you'll notice they're much slower if you're holding shift but not holding shift it's much faster by pressing F the camera will focus on the selected part so if you select this part here in the center and you move about and press F let's just select this part and press F it will focus back to the selected part now with the mouse the right mouse button will move the camera view around so right and then if you move it around you'll notice I can look around. You can also so take a look at this up here, which will give you the left view or the front view or the top left front view or the top view. And you can use this dice however you feel is best. And you can use that to look around. You can use the middle mouse button, so the scroller. And when you press it, so you click it in, and you move the camera around, it will pan the camera view. And finally, the mouse scroll will zoom in and out. So if you scroll, it will zoom in and out. And of course you can use left click to select things. Now let's get to actually building a few things. So when we work with parts in Roblox, a part is a primary building block. You can move, resize, rotate, customize some of its properties to affect its appearance, such as the color or the material it's made out of. So let's get started with adding a few parts. To add a part, we can go to the model tab up here. When you click there, you'll see all of these options. You can just navigate your way to this part here. You'll see there's a button down here. These are two different buttons. This button down here will give you a drop down of shapes you can use, parts you can use. Choose any part you want. I shall choose the block. So you just click it and now we have a block. Let's talk about moving this block around. When you move a block, you have three axes you can move it against. The X axis, which is generally horizontal in terms of left and right. The Y axis, which is usually up and down, and the Z axis, which is forward and backwards. To see these axes, you can click on this move button here. And here we go. So the X axis is red, so this is actually the forward and back, as you can see here. But if you look from the front, you'll notice, so this here, this is the X axis. This green, this is the Y axis, so up and down. And this blue is the Z axis, front and backwards. You can adjust the snapping behavior. So you'll notice it kind of snaps how, as it moves. So it doesn't move smoothly, it snaps. To change that, you could go here to where it says 0 0.6 studs. And let's just increase that to two. And you'll notice now it moves by much larger steps than what it did when it was at 0 0.6. So depending on how fast you like it to move and how accurate you would like to be, you can change that. Now let's get another part in here. And I would like to maybe get this wedge in here. Now this wedge is relatively small. It's not very big at all. And I would actually like to make it a little bigger. To do that, you can go to this scale property here and make sure you're on the model tab. Go to the scale property and now you can scale it using one of these three dots. 
The green will scale it up and down. The red will scale it left and right. And the blue will scale it front and back. So here, let's maybe make it nice and high and make it come forward a bit. I'm going to move to this view up here. I do enjoy this view the most. And this may make it a little bit shorter like that. And I like this. Now you can also rotate it by clicking on this rotate button. And now you can rotate it however you want. Like that. Or you can use the blue and it will rotate it more on a weirdish axis. And then of course, you have your green, which will rotate it like that. Now I'd like to just rotate it back like this and move it like this. So it's like that. And again, you can also change how much it rotates with this. So let's maybe instead of 45 degrees, we say 90 degrees. Now it will rotate by 90 degrees instead of 45 degrees. Or we'll snap at 90 degrees. Maybe we say 45 again and we do it again. Then you'll notice not nearly as much as 90. Now you can anchor a part to the ground as an example. By anchoring a part, you'll notice that generally gravity pulls each part to the base plate, which is this plate right here. This is the base plate. Now gravity pulls all the parts to this place. To prevent any forces from changing the position of a part, such as this part here, or this part here, what we can do is we can set its anchoring. So let me actually just move this upwards here, like that. Now, if we were to run this, and take a note, it's in the sky. If we were to run this, which we can do by going to this button right here, this blue button, we can just click on that. You'll notice it fell to the ground here at the side. So there we go, it's at the side there. It's no longer in the air. To keep it in the air, we need to anchor it. So I'm going to stop the game by pressing on this right there. It was red, but now it's not red anymore. And it's in the air here, but it's no longer once we play the game. To anchor it, we can go here, we can click on it. You'll notice we have an Explorer tab here at the side. Then we here we have a property. So depending on which one you choose, the properties will change. But I'm going to select this one, make sure it's selected. And you'll also notice it's selected here as part. Or if we click here on Wedge, you'll notice the Wedge is selected. I'm going to say Part because I want to modify this one specifically. Then in the properties, we can search for anchor. And here's anchored. We just tick that checkbox and now it will stay in the sky. So now if we run this, you'll notice now it's in the sky here. It's no longer falling to the ground because we anchored it to the sky. You can also change the color of this by just going here and searching for color. And now here we have colors. If you click on this gray box here, which might be a different color depending on what you have done, then here we can have a bunch of colors we can choose. Let's choose this bluish color here. We say, okay, and now it's blue. As simple as that, you can change the color. You can also make it neon, but this is based on the material. So if we go to material, currently it's plastic and there's a lot of materials you can choose from such as neon, and now it will glow. It's a very bright type of coloring now. Now it's asphalt, so it looks weird because I did a bunch of things. And of course, it just licked it again. But there's a lot you can choose from, such as brick or diamond plate or cracked lava, foil. There's a lot of things you can choose from here. You also insert assets into your game here, which is fairly simple. We can go to view and then we make sure to select toolbox here. So make sure it's selected. You should see a pop-up like this. And here you can search for any asset you want, such as school bus. And there we have a school bus. You can just click on it and it will import the school bus for you. So now here we have a school bus. 
And then finally, again, you can play it if you want and you can test it out for yourself, enjoying what you just made. You might have made your first platformer right now. So now here we have a school bus. Oh, I can actually go through the school bus. That is pretty neat. But we have a school bus. We have this neon floating block and we have our base plate here. I encourage you to play around with what I just taught you. See what you can do with everything you have just learned. And that is that for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next video and please like and subscribe.